Raleigh, you've advocated for youth ministries that are more than just a Pied Piper and each other. You've talked about why they need more than a Pied Piper. What's wrong with the youth ministry that's based on vibrant relationships where the kids support one another? Well, the Pied Piper has inherent in it the development of faith in young people around a particular person. And with that, both its strengths and its weaknesses. In the end, it's my sense that the limitations far outweigh the strengths of such a model and the strengths th that are in that model of a model that is particularly strong of the faith itself, someone who's able to gather like a magnet kids ar uh, ar around themselves. Ultimate, ultimately, it weighs on them, they burn out, it uh, creates a, a distortion of what faith as community is all about. So even as one begins to think about how to take what one person might be able to do in giving leadership to youth ministry, beyond their giving leadership to ministry, one begins to see what it is that is the plus, the more. When one thinks also uh, about, well, youth ministry is essentially about youth. It's peers gathering together and being available to one another. There are strengths in that as well. Uh, a young person discovers that they're not the only one that uh, in fact is a believer in Jesus Christ. They're not the only one who's practicing their faith as a disciple. For them, it's uh, great to, to see that they have colleagues, peers, others that very much believe and are, are supporting each other in this process. But what's missing in both those, that is in the Pied Piper who becomes the central adult in the life of the faith of a young person and peers is, is the capacity of the whole people of God to receive and, and bring to each other the strengths of faith, such as uh, for a person who's 13 to have someone who is 23, who can provide a, a, a living example or two or three of what it's like for faith to be carried on into the life of someone they look up to, uh, the next stage of what life might be like. This is not just something I'm doing when I'm a teenager, but this becomes a way of life. This becomes something that continues on into young adulthood. Or someone who is 33, uh, someone who in fact as an adult has matured and they can see the, 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 if you will, the unfolding of faith's strengths in greater knowledge, a greater sense of, if you will, capacity to, to give reason for the faith that is within them, a breadth of practices that now inform life itself. Or if one thinks about uh, an 83-year-old who carries the wisdom of the years, who's a, a safe grandparent figure, who is able in those processes to bring the struggles of life itself, perhaps they've had the experiences of Job, to have had uh, success and, 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 and to have celebrated life in, in the ways in which God has been present. For those narratives and stories now to get shared uh, with the teenager provides for them an opportunity to see how God is at work in the overarching arc of life. What also happens regularly in those processes is that the relationships with these differing aged persons provide differing values to a teenager. The one who's 10 years older, a chance to see what's coming up. A, a person who's 20, 25 years older, an opportunity to sh see life at that stage through the eyes of someone who's actually living it. And then the wisdom of uh, a, a grandparent who can love and support and care without being competitive or having to be the one who speaks to them regarding this is what's right, this is what's wrong in terms of guiding their life in a particular kind of way. Grandparent can, can love without necessarily having to be someone who controls in a particular kind of way. I think a final thing to say in terms of, of uh, what's more than uh, being a, uh, a peer with one another is the discovery of a young person that the gifts that they have uh, in fact make a, a, a critical contribution to people at, at other stages of life. That they are in fact valuable to a grandparent in terms of a spirit of hope and possibilities and excitement. That they bring energy and imagination and new thinking to a parent generation. So an intergenerational involvement of men and women of faith provides the occasion for young people to both be received and cared for by people at different 
points in their life at di in, 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 during different generational periods at the same time that young people themselves discover, I really have a contribution to make to the whole.